in our nation. But unfortunately, uh, we still sometimes have challenges around this holiday. In fact, uh, you know, we have a lot of tragedy. So uh, just to let you know, since uh, July 1st of last year to now, we've lost 33, uh, 31 people on the roadway due to drunk driving. So that's just unacceptable. This July 4th, we wanna, we're going to have extra patrols out on the roadway. Uh, we'd, like, we'd like to not make any arrests on our roadways this, uh, this holiday weekend. We want everybody to enjoy it, enjoy the time with your family. But unfortunately, we know that we may still have people that go out, drink too much, and get on the road. So we and our partner agencies are going to be out there. We're going to make sure that we're patrolling heavily. And we want to see you all safe. We want to get everybody home safe to their families. But if you do go out on the roadways um, having drank too much, or if you go out on the waterways because boating while intoxicated is also illegal and carries the same penalties, we're going to be out there on the roadway. We're going to be out there on the water. You know, at the beginning of the year, we started a road safety task force uh, where we have been working very hard uh, to keep impaired drivers, uh, aggressive drivers, um, road rage, and all those things off our roadways. And because of that, because of the partners that I have behind me and all the officers that are working so hard and constables and deputies that are out there, we've made 438 arrests just through this task force um, just this year through uh, June 23rd. That was the uh, last date we have recorded. So we've actually made some since then. 288 of those were done by HPD alone. So, again, we want to let you know that we will be out there and we will be doing enforcement. Uh, sadly, we've also had, uh, just since um, last year, right here in Houston alone, 76 DWI arrests, and we've responded to 43 DWI crashes. You know, Fourth of July should be a joyous time for everybody. It should be a time for families to come together and celebrate our nation's birth. It's a time for families to get together and have backyard barbecues and for everybody to relax and enjoy the, 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 the summer and the height of the summer. And just it, it, it should not be a time where we have people uh, having to go and get that terrible, tragic phone call that their loved one has lost their lives or been seriously injured because somebody chose to be irresponsible and drink too much and then get behind the wheel of a car or a boat and go out there and harm them. Let's avoid that. Let's make sure that this weekend, through this, from now going all the way through the weekend, that we have no DWI fatality crashes, no DWI crashes altogether. We are asking the public to be very responsible to help us because we can't be any, everywhere but we will be out there, and I assure you that if we see you on the roadways and identify you as driving while impaired, we will stop you and we will arrest you. I have a whole host of team members behind me, and they all have comments to make too. Um, and I won't go down the list, but I'll let them introduce the next person up afterwards. So for me, the next person up is Assistant Chief Tommy Diaz with the Harris County Sheriff's Department. Good morning. I'm Harris County Assistant Chief Tommy Diaz. Uh, I'm here on behalf of Sheriff Ed Gonzalez. First of all, I want to thank all the partners up here. Uh, this isn't just a, a one weekend effort. Like Chief Satterwhite said, we meet every single month to discuss and look at trends and patterns, where are crashes occurring, where are DWI fatalities occurring, and how can we collectively address that. So I just want to thank the, our, our partners at the Houston Police Department, Texas DPS, uh, metros here and all the deputy and all the constables offices are here because it takes coordination it takes effort and we're all on the same team and we just want the roadways to be safe so hats off to the leadership here at the houston police department for help coordinating this annually uh the support has been steadfast so thank you very much uh i just want to echo some of the sentiments that chief satterwhite spoke about and our feelings are the same you know 248 years ago the first generation of American patriots were getting ready to sign that document and say, hey, 
We're a, we're a free country. We're, we're not colonies anymore. And now we stand here today to celebrate that, but we want to do safely, right? We want to get to that next 4th of July, that 249th and the 250th. So we're begging you, we're urging you to make a commitment to get home safely. And that means, you know, get, designate a sober driver, use a ride-sharing app. We're going to have extra deputies out on the streets. We're also going to have extra deputies out on the, on the waterways. So this is not just about safety on the roadways. It's about safety on any mode of transportation. So please, we beg you, identify a plan and execute that plan to get home safely. Um, from 2018 to 2022, across the United States, the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration reports there have been 2,228 people killed in motor vehicle cra traffic crashes over the 4th of July holiday period. Uh, similarly, boating under the influence possesses significant risk, transforming what should be leisurely outings to potential disasters, where not only are the impaired operator's life at stake, but also those of innocent passengers and fellow boaters. Uh, Harris County has sadly ranked amongst the highest in the nation for traffic fatalities due to impairment. We're actively working to change this distinction through education, enforcement, and community engagement, coordination. Uh, impaired driving is not an accident or a mistake. It is 100% preventable crime. So please, please, please help us prevent those crimes. We don't want to arrest anybody. We don't want, any, we don't want to work any fatality crashes. We want to have an easy night too. All right, so we're asking you, please make that plan. Please execute that plan. Um, so on behalf of uh, Harris County Sheriff's Office, happy 4th of July, happy Independence Day. Uh, we ask that you work with us. If you observe some impaired driving, call 911. And we'll go out, we're going to head that direction. We're going to have extra patrols out. If you see someone that you think is going to make a bad decision, you know, engage with us and we can help that way as well. So I'd like to pass it on to um, our partner from Texas Department of Public Safety, Lieutenant Craig Cummings. All right. Thank you, Chief. And, uh, you know, for state troopers, traffic law enforcement and saving lives on the highway is a passion for us. So I want to thank the members of the media for being here today to help us spread these life-saving messages. Um, like the Chief had said, this is a cause for celebration, and we want everyone to enjoy this day um, and this holiday. But we also realize that these festivities must be enjoyed responsibly. Sadly, the Texas Department of Transportation reports from last year's crash data that every two hours a person dies on a Texas roadway and every two minutes someone is injured. Our goal again this year, as it is every year, is to end this streak of fatal crashes on our roadways. State troopers and our law enforcement partners know all too well about the dangers that motorists face out there. That's why Texans and visitors alike can expect to see more troopers on the roadways as law enforcement works towards a collective goal, a day with zero fatal crashes. Last July 4th holiday, troopers across Texas issued over 18,000 citations and warnings, leading to over 5,000 arrests. We hope that we don't have to arrest anyone this holiday because everyone is obeying the law. Sadly, when it comes to DWIs, this last year's data from TxDOT says that 25% of the fatalities that occurred were intoxicated related. Um, that is something that we can change. This 4th of July can take on a much different look if we all do our part to end that streak of deadly crashes on our roadways. It's through enforcement, education, and a collective desire to ensure that our loved ones get home safely. And I am hopeful that everyone gets home safely this weekend and the remainder of this year. Thank you. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to Harris County District Attorney Kim Hogg. Thank you, Lieutenant. Thank you, Chief Satterwhite. Thank you, members of MAD, for what you do. I'm Kim Hogg, Harris County DA. You know, they say that you cannot arrest your way out of a problem. But DWI is actually an exception to that rule. Let me give you some statistics and data that we've gathered through this partnership since last July 4th. You know, it's, you, you just can't emphasize enough the force multiplier that police agencies can be when they work together. And when you add the district attorney's office to that in these no refusal weekends, it, it's, it's really powerful. 
Now, last July 4th, there were 96 arrests. That was before we had a major partnership effort. In 2023 on New Year's, same three-day period, New Year's Eve, New Year's Day, day after, there were 213 arrests. And this last Memorial Day, 2024, there were 217 arrests. So for drunk drivers, this shows you're more likely to be arrested this holiday than you were last holiday. And why are the arrests important? These arrests save lives. Yes, many of the offenders were first offenders. And I'm talking to you. It'll hurt you professionally. It'll hurt you personally. DWI has a stigma for a reason, and employers shy away from it because most of us have to use transportation to get to and from work. Try that with a DWI record. <coughs> so think about yourself if you're not thinking about victims. But in addition to these first offenders, many of these arrests were for second and third DWI offenders. Those are chronic drinkers who often expose people far more times than they get caught for, and they're frequently the subject and the defendants in fatality cases. Now, I want to thank the witnesses and the family members and the next of kin who somehow find the strength and courage to get up and help others by speaking and trying to raise awareness about just what an intoxication or impaired driver did to their family. Because if it can happen to their family, it can happen to your family, it can happen to my family. So I'd like to thank MAD for the work over the years that they've done with law enforcement and prosecutors to help people see what DWI really looks like after the fact. And it's terrible. You don't want to be the person that was responsible for another human being's death because you couldn't call an Uber, you didn't designate a driver, you had to have that next drink. Let's be, uh, let's be smart, let's be compassionate, and let's uh, have a safe holiday this 4th of July. With that, I'd like to bring up Sharice Thomas. Sharice lost two family members to impaired driving. Thank you, thank you so much. Good morning. My name is Sharice Thomas. I am a victim volunteer with Mothers Against Drunk Drivers. On February 3rd of 2020, about three o'clock in the afternoon, my daughter Destiny was killed the driver hit her head on and killed her, breaking every bone in her body from her waist all the way to the top of her head. That crushed my heart, but I have to go on. At 18, Destiny bought her own car. She worked two jobs. She was a cosmetology student, she was handpicked by the Pasadena Advisory Board for her whole senior school. She was so excited about the prom and her upcoming graduation. On February 3rd, when a senseless driver took her life, Destiny also had received her acceptance letter to Southern University. She was doing a double major. Instead of celebrating her accomplishments that day, we were facing planning a funeral. The guy that took her life got five years. Do you know what I got? A life sentence. His family will get him back in a few years. We will never get her back. We will only have memories. I got those memories of what her life could have been. In 2024, Destiny should have been walking across the stage. She should have been making her mom proud in Louisiana. That was what she had planned. Someone else had some other plan for destiny. No parent should ever bury their child. Every day I sit at a table with an empty chair. MAD plays a crucial role in raising awareness about the danger of, of impaired driving. 
during the holidays like the 4th of July, when there's a significant increase of alcohol-related crashes on both land and water. We work to ensure that people celebrate safely and make smart decisions to prevent senseless tragedies. This Independence Day, Mothers Against Drunk Drivers urge everyone to plan ahead for a safe ride home. When you decide what you want to wear to celebrate, also you decide what you want to eat. Decide who's going to drive you home. Choose ride share. Designate a sober driver or use public transportation. This could be your loved one. You could be the one standing here telling your story. Never say ever, because I said the same thing. I have always instilled in my kids to keep your eyes on the road, and somebody took that away. Please think twice about drinking and driving. On a side note, in April of 2022, we were driving downtown by St. Joseph Hospital. A distracted driver ran the light, texting, driving, looking at his partner on the other side. And he T-boned us. He took my 22, I'm sorry, my four-month-old grandson, Carson. Again, I ask that you please keep your eyes on the road. Do it for me. Do it for destiny. Do it for Jennifer. Thank you. Buenos días. Mi nombre es Rosa Villanueva y soy una especialista de servicios a las víctimas por la organización Madres contra la Conducción en Estado de Ebriedad. MAD desempeña un papel crucial para llevar un fuerte mensaje de concientización a la comunidad sobre los peligros de conducir bajo los efectos del alcohol durante días festivos como lo es el 4 de julio, cuando hay un aumento significativo de choques vehiculares relacionados al uso del alcohol, tanto en las carreteras como en el agua. Trabajamos arduamente para garantizar que las personas celebren de manera segura y que tomen decisiones inteligentes para evitar tragedias sin sentido. El 4 de julio es uno de los días festivos más peligrosos en las carreteras y cuerpos de agua de nuestra nación, debido a choques causados por el uso del alcohol. Matt exhorta a todos a que planifiquen con anticipación un viaje seguro de regreso a casa. Si va a celebrar y el alcohol es parte de esa celebración, no maneje, no navegue, no utilice vehículos eh, recreativos como lo son las motos acuáticas o los vehículos todoterreno. Cuando decida dónde va a celebrar, también decida cómo va a regresar a su casa de una forma segura, ya sea planificando un viaje compartido con un conductor sobrio, transporte público o con un conductor designado. El 3 de febrero, Destiny, eh, del 2020, Destiny de 18 años, hija de nuestra víctima y voluntaria Sherry Thomas, se dirigía de regreso a la casa a eso de las 3 de la tarde de la escuela. Un conductor, quien decidió tomar alcohol y manejar en estado de intoxicación, impactó el vehículo en el que Destiny se, re se regresaba a su casa de frente. Ese impacto ocasionó que todos los huesos de Destiny se quebraran desde el tope de su cabeza hasta su cintura. En cuestión de segundos, la vida de una hermosa joven con mucho potencial y un futuro muy brillante por delante fue arrebatado de sus manos. Destiny estaba muy emocionada por su graduación de cuarto año, estaba muy emocionada por su baile de graduación El 3 de febrero del 2020, el mismo día que Destiny perdió su vida, había, ella había recibido su carta de aceptación de la Universidad del Sur de Luciana. Pero en lugar de celebrar todos sus logros, Cherise y su familia tuvieron que planificar cómo iban a sepultar a su hija. Una horrible experiencia que no se le desea a nadie, ya que ningún padre, ninguna madre merece sepultar a sus hijos. 
el hombre que mató a Destiny, solo recibió cinco años en la prisión. Pero Cherise y su familia están sirviendo una cadena perpetua, porque ese dolor que este conductor intoxicado le causó a ella y a su familia es un dolor con el que tienen que vivir por siempre, para el resto de sus vidas. Todas las familias deberían poder disfrutar de días festivos como el del 4 de julio en paz, en armonía, en conjunto con todos sus seres queridos. Todos estos oficiales de policía que están atrás de mí deberían poder salir a trabajar tranquilos, tener un día en paz y regresar a sus hogares también. Todos ellos están poniendo su vida también en peligro por cuidar la nuestra. Así que nosotros les exhortamos, Matt trabaja arduamente para llevar este mensaje y quiere que se entienda. Se puede planificar, se pueden tomar decisiones sabias. Tomar alcohol y manejar es un crimen 100% prevenible. Un crimen. Si usted va a tomar alcohol, busque una manera de llegar a su casa de una forma segura. Piénselo dos veces antes de manejar. Su vida y la de tantas otras personas están en riesgo. No lo eche por la borda. Piense en Destiny, piense en Charisse, piense en Carson y en todas las víctimas antes de tomar una decisión que se puede prevenir. Muchas gracias. Con ustedes ahora el comandante, Commander Héctor García. Muchas gracias. Buenos días. La ciudad de Houston y el condado de Harris son número uno en muchas cosas positivas. Sin embargo, también somos el número uno en cuanto a muertes por manejar en estado de ebriedad. Desde el primero de julio del 2023 hasta hoy, hemos tenido 31 muertes por causa de manejar bajo la influencia del alcohol. Nosotros y nuestras agencias asociadas que ustedes ven aquí a mi alrededor, estamos comprometidos a garantizar que nuestras carreteras sigan siendo seguras. Entonces, si bebe y conduce, lo encontraremos y lo arrestaremos. Desde enero nos hemos asociado con agencias en el área circundante para combatir la conducción de vehículos en manera agresiva y la conducción de vehículos en estado de ebriedad. En lo que va del año hasta el 23 de junio de este año, el grupo de trabajo especializado ha realizado 438 arrestos por manejar en estado de ebriedad en nuestras carreteras, con nosotros otros socios encargados de hacer cumplir la ley. El año pasado, entre el 1 y el 4 de julio, realizamos 76 arrestos por manejar bajo la influencia y respondimos a 43 accidentes también relacionados con manejar bajo la influencia. El 4 de julio es un momento para celebrar, no para lamentar la pérdida de un ser querido. Tenga, en con, tenga un conductor designado, use un servicio de viaje compartido, use metro, Use un taxi para llegar a la casa de manera segura si usted está bebiendo. Recuerde también que al conducir un bote en estado de intoxicación se, aplican nuestro, se aplica a nuestros lagos y vías fluviales. Navegar bajo la influencia del alcohol conlleva la misma sanción que manejar en estado de ebriedad en un coche. También tendremos oficiales en nuestras vías fluviales que pueden realizar arrestos y lo harán si usted está operando un bote bajo la, la influencia del alcohol. Queremos que todos disfruten de un día de fiesta seguro este 4 de julio, que incluya celebrar de manera responsable. Muchas gracias. Sí. So I want to thank all my colleagues and thank you all for helping us spread the message. Also want to acknowledge specifically uh, uh, Metro is here tonight, today as well as uh, Precinct 1. They didn't have speaking roles, but they, were, they are our partners in trying to keep everybody safe. So we are asking the public's help. We really need everybody to be responsible and heed all the advice given here today. Um, the family of Destiny, the family of Jennifer Chavez, Deputy Chavez, they're in a club that they didn't ask to be a part of, but now they're in that club for life. And it, it's got thousands of members, and we want to never add another person to that. 
And that means that the public has to be more responsible for, and not get on the road impaired. There are so many ways, so many ways to avoid drinking and driving uh, in today's world. Do not be the person that gets on there having had too much and get on that roadway and add to this club with more families that will now grieve the loss of a loved one for the rest of their life. Do not be that person. We will be out there. Everybody behind me and so many more agencies, we will all have representation on the roadway. We will be watching for this. We will, our goal is to have no issues and to have no DWIs and to have no crashes this weekend. We want to we wanna set a new record. It is an, an unfortunate thing and something that all of us hang our heads on and that Harris County often leads the nation in drunk driving crashes and drunk driving uh, arrests. Let's change that narrative. Let's change it for our county, for our city, and for our region and show that we're the best city and the safest county to drive on our roadways anytime, not just during holidays. So with that, we'll take questions. You do. You do. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, the question is: Will there be more patrols around? Yes. And, and what message does HPD have for folks that are coming from outside the country and outside our state to have fun? Well, first we say welcome. Obviously, this is a welcoming city. We do big events. And, and, yeah, we're going to host uh, Argentina and, and Ecuador, and I understand there's a big name that's going to be playing on that field on, on uh, Thursday. Great. Awesome. Uh, it's a joyous time. Let's keep it that way, meaning that make good decisions. Um, use ride share. Use taxis. Use our rail system, our bus system. There are just, again, I will say there are so many different ways uh, to get to the uh, stadium safely and from the stadium, and it just you have that peace of mind that you can go and enjoy that event. Designated drivers, uh, all of those things are options. What is not an option is to drink and then get behind the wheel. That is not an option for people that are here, that live here, or for the people that are visiting. Will there be more patrols? Yes, there will be more patrols around the stadium. There are going to be more patrols around the city. Um, all of our, 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 you know, all of our, around our areas where we have a lot of nightclubs and bars and establishments because that's what we know where we know that that might occur we're going to be everywhere um you know as much as possible at the same time are there any other questions anybody from my also from the group behind me with that thank you very much for coming out and helping us spread this message and a happy fourth of july holiday for everybody thank you